This is the Alden Report. Hey, it's Mike Alden. Listen, before we get into this next episode of the Alden Report, I want to tell you about a company and a service that I believe can take your company to the next level. And that company is Penji. P-E-N-J-I. Penji is an unlimited design service that connects you with the top 2% of graphic designers in the world. You can get creative output like as if you had an internal team, but without that additional overhead cost. Look, if you want things like logos, to flyers, to digital art, even UX and UI, Penji is the company for you. I know because I've used them. Look, if you're the person within your company that's doing all the graphic design work, or maybe you even have a team and you're overwhelmed and you want to outsource it to a company that you know you can trust. Look, we know all these other services out there. Penji is like no other graphic design service that I've ever seen and I've used them and I highly recommend going to Penji. Co. Because you're a listener and a subscriber of The Alden Report, you can actually get 15% off of your first month with Penji. It's really, really simple. Go to Penji.co, enter in the code ALDEN15, and you'll get 15% off of your first month. Listen, if you want things like logos, custom illustrations, even a website, and you want it all under one plan, one plan that's not going to lock you in forever, then visit Penji.co and when you sign up, make sure you enter the code ALDEN15. Once you submit your order, it's really, really simple. Here's the thing. They get your custom designs back to you within 48 hours or less. So go on and visit Penji.co and enter in the code ALDEN15. That's P-E-N-J-I.co and enter in the code ALDEN15. is the Alden Report. All right. Well, my name is Mike Alden. We are here in Blue Bay Studios. And as always, I'm super excited for my next guest. My next guest is one of the co-founders of a really interesting company called Penji, P-E-N-J-I dot co. They're an on-demand graphic design company. And I'm really interested, I was really interested in what they were doing because um, as a marketing company myself, having employed graphic designers um, and web designers and, and, and also just kind of leveraging just people within the company, we've always really kind of struggled with this with this world. And I think a lot of businesses um, struggle with, you know, things like their logo, or their websites, or even like if you look behind me, like what does a book look like? All these different things. I'm wearing uh, Wicked Happy gear right now, so it's it's a real it's a it's a service that I think a lot of businesses need, and a lot of people that are not um, you know artsy, uh, so to speak, they just they kind of struggle with it. And I you know I I, I discovered this company a, a little while ago, and I'm really excited to have Jonathan Grzbowski on. Jonathan is one of the co-founders. Of Penji. He's also the chief marketing officer. So we're going to talk a lot about, you know, how we started the business. It's really interesting, the trajectory of the business, but it's also their model is different than really any other uh, company that I've seen uh, online or out there. So please help me welcome Jonathan Grzbowski. Jonathan, thanks so much for being my guest. It's uh, it's an honor, man. Thank you. So, um, you know, we talked before, uh, be, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, a little bit about your background. Uh, you know, you, you're, you, you're a, a great entrepreneur. This business um, has just grown tremendously. But tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of like the foundations. How, how did, well, I guess, you know, how did you get into this world? Because I don't think you're a graphic designer. I'm not. I'm a terrible graphic designer. Um, but I think I have a good eye for graphic design. And I think very similar to how, uh, you know, with your business now, which is, you know, marketing related of, of, of some capacity, um, that's how we started our, our business as well. So uh, we were a digital marketing agency that uh, was just not necessarily the most specialized or best uh, agency on the planet. And I remember specifically um, sitting in a call, sitting in a boardroom of some kind with like Rutgers University, which is relatively close by uh, our place. And, and I remember getting yelled at by a dean uh, because he didn't like the way that we were communicating through our website design and our website development. And I remember sitting there and I just think to myself, like, why the F am I here? You know, uh, who am I actually serving? You know, who am I helping? Am I serving this, this, the business or the people? And we kind of went back and we thought to ourselves, like, you know, this isn't, this isn't right. You know, this doesn't feel right. We shouldn't be doing this. So 
we kind of looked at ourselves and we said, what are some problems that we have in our business? And what are some problems that we potentially think that other people may have? And we were always uh, commended by our graphic design. And so we started asking, what are some other problems that people have? And we feel, we realized that a lot of other people also have problems with finding graphic design talent. Um, and then that kind of was the beginning of, of, of Penji. We kind of tested it. We, we did a lot of beta testing. Um, we, we did a lot of everything by hand at first. And then it kind of just grew and grew and grew to, to where we are today. But it was a lot of just grassroots, nothing sexy type of thing. And I think that the difference between the businesses that we did before versus now is that now we're actually solving a problem um, versus us just surviving previously. So I definitely want to get into, you know, your business itself, what it provides. Um, but I'd love to kind of hear about the beginnings, you know, a lot of the people, you know, by the way, you know, I think your service is perfect for our viewers and listeners. We have entrepreneurs, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, and, you know, you, you know, up and coming companies and even bigger companies as well. So this is, a, I think you're a, kind of a perfect fit for us. Um, but, but tell us about, the beginnings. So you have this, you have this idea, uh, you're not a graphic designer. I'd love to kind of hear about the early stages of some of the steps, some of the difficulties in starting the business. And, in, in, you know, those, those early stages are when you're like, fuck man, like, what am I going to, like, what am I going to do next? How do I do this? How do I do that? Yeah. So I think from the first 100 customers, we did two things. Uh, number one, a lot of our foundation uh, and notoriety came from helping our um, nonprofit communities within the geographic area where we were located. So we were located in Philadelphia and we also did a lot of uh, good things in Camden, New Jersey, which is uh, historically speaking, one of the most dangerous cities in America. Um, we helped a lot of the nonprofits within there. We gained some notoriety, not even for the aspect of the, that was the reason, but it was just the, something that we felt like would be would be good by just giving back. And we kind of focused that in the very beginning of our of our company is just giving back to our community because if we're giving, then we're going to be receiving in, in some in some capacity. It may not be sales related, but it could just be energy. You know, we don't we don't know. So we did a lot of uh, nonprofit things, but we also uh, surveyed close to 150 people. Um, so be in, in combination between the nonprofit community in combination with the, um, with the 150 people that we asked, if we build this, will you come? They ended up doing that. Um, and, and so that was kind of like a, a, a pseudo our first 100 customers. We were charging um, at the time $79 a month which we don't charge that anymore. Just so if people, you know, listening, they go to those our are, site. Those are, those are, those, those prices are long gone. That was a long time yeah, ago. You yeah. missed out. You missed we, out. Well, we were stupid for doing it because we, what we were thinking was like, let's just get revenue, right? Let's just like test it. Cause we need people to actually see if this works. And then over time we talked to them over the phone and we said, Hey, we can't do this for this price anymore. Let's, let's do this. And so from there, that was kind of the beginning um, from, from, to kind of move on to that, um, we ended up just doing a lot of podcast interviews like this, uh, just getting the name out there. Uh, I guess I, I wouldn't say stealing is the right word, but using other people's audience sure, uh, in order to, to promote what it is that we're doing. And I think from the very beginning, this has always been a, a channel for us that, that allowed us to grow because uh, let's just say you have, you know, a hundred, we'll just use hundred round numbers, a hundred people. If, if those hundred people listen, they've never heard of Penji before. They might be inclined of those 10 people that might actually go to our website. And of those, of those uh, 10, maybe, maybe one person could actually become a customer. And so the, that, that kind of mathematical equation has always been something relatively important to, uh, to building the company. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it's interesting too. I know that you said you had had a podcast uh, back in the day. Um, I know that you, you've done some of the podcasts. You've been on one of the big, we've been on together, Mixergy, which is, which is a big one. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a great way to, to truly get, get the word out. And really all you're doing right now is, is you're just, it's just your time, right? And to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of, kind of what you're doing. Um, so do, do you enjoy doing the podcast? I do because um probably ego centric uh, in the aspect that I just like talking, but I also at my core, I think I generally like helping people. And I think that's kind of why 
we stopped doing the digital marketing agency because we all felt as if that we weren't helping enough people. Um, I, I'm always the type of person that kind of just checks in on everybody to say, hey, you know, how you doing? You doing okay? How are things, et cetera, et cetera. And that's given me a lot of success in, in my personal life and also professional life because of that, that caring nature. So I think I do like doing podcasts just specifically because I get to share. And I think what we're doing is incredibly special and I'd love it to be documented in the sense of like my personal legacy. Uh, I, if I were to die tomorrow, I think it, people could have a really good understanding of who I am as a, as a human being, um, but also be able to hopefully take strategies that, that what we're doing um, in, in order to apply it for their own, because businesses like Penji, in my opinion, again, this could be my ego, but I think they come around once every, every, uh, few years. And, and I'm not saying that we need to be this like giant behemoth of a company that's like publicly traded or anything like that. Um, but I think the things that we're trying to fix are, are really, really large problems in the small business community. And, uh, and I'd like people to listen to it and hopefully apply it to their own business. You know, I'm on your your Twitter, uh, and uh, you have a um, hashtag. I believe it says "Trust the process." Yeah, big, tell, me uh, little, tell me a little bit about about what that means to you. Uh, more than more than than just the actual literal definition, which is it was from. Uh, I'm a big basketball fan. The Sixers lost last night, uh, which is an absolutely incredibly <laughs> like stupid reason like I, I it boggles my mind so we're recording this in the end of the middle of june um hopefully by the time that this airs they uh, they move on to the they beat the freaking stupid atlanta hawks and <laughs> and they move on to the hopefully the nba finals <laughs> all uh, right but, so you're sorry so you like basketball did you play in college no not at all um but i just like basketball it's always been it's always been a really cool sport for me um but when it comes to the business side of, of the trust the process i think i think there's a lot of truth to living that outside of just basketball um i think for the most part you do have to trust the process and and in what you're doing um the amount of times that i've questioned myself uh is astronomical uh and i think a core principle of just trusting the process and saying, no, this is, this is what you're supposed to do. This is how you're supposed to do it. It just takes time. You have to be patient. Um, I think that version of trust the process, I think is very uh, prevalent in my life. But how do you know? I mean, how, how do you know that, that so you the are process on the right is path? actually, <clears throat> yeah. How yeah. do you know that you're really on the right path? I, you know, I, I'll, t I'll tell you, I, I'm going to, the reason why I'm asking, I'll give an example this morning for me personally, I, I, by the way, I try not to make this about me at all. Right. No, um, I got a message from a guy that used to work for me. Uh, and he's an actually, he's an artist actually now. And uh, he sends me a screenshot of my book, Ask More, Get More, which is back there, that I hand wrote a note for him in 2013. This is before the book was even out. And he said, you know, Mike, this, you know, th that, that note that you put in the book, and he was just working in my call center. He's like, it changed my life. And I never really thought of it like that, you know? And I'm like, man, this, like this, it, what, what you and I are doing right now, like this is what I love to do, right? This mm -hmm. is, but this is my thing where we're, you know, we don't really make a lot of money at it, but I love doing it. So how, at what point do you know that, okay, this is what I really should be doing? Yeah. I think, I think that they, they can be actually misleading sometimes because when you, I mean, I'm really happy that you, you received that note. And I think, I think that in particular might be like an outlier because, you know, you had an interpersonal relationship with this individual, but I think there are validation points throughout the day that you might receive that might sway you to be like, yeah, this is it. Or, Hey, this is, this is, this is actually not working. I need to pivot, even if it's changing a process. And I think something that's really important and critical to us is um, being data-driven and excuse me, um, and basically writing down all the times that a customer says X or writing down uh, all the times when uh, a person complains about Y. If you were to write all these things down and map them and think about it as a mathematical equation versus that of an emotional reaction, I think you might be able to come up with a little bit more, uh, more level-headed processes and procedures. 
So basically, you told me that that note that I got is just a false fucking positive. Thing. <laughs> I appreciate you. Appreciate it. <laughs> it could my be. day. My, my day was great up until this point, dude. So, you know what? We're gonna end the fucking show. No, no but you know, you're right, man. You know, it's funny you say that too because you know I'm a lawyer and you know, math is really not my thing. I got a couple guys that, you know, that it worked for me that are, that are really data driven. My CIO is an actual Mensa. I always say that I go, you can't say that to people because it sounds douchey, but, but I can, cause it's kind of cool. Um, and you're right. You know, I think a lot of us, um, we, we, um, shy away from the data or we, or we even avoid the data, uh, because we don't want to, we don't want to learn what the data, or we don't want to listen to what the data is telling us. Um, but it can help you get, go, like you said, pivot or, or bring you in the right direction that you need to go. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think using the example of like your experience even more so I think is, is critical because, you know, the, 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 the note validated the fact that like you are where you need to be as a, as a human being, right. That you should be writing books and you should be inspiring people but that doesn't necessarily affect like the business decision, right? Like, you know, that you're in the right position in, in your life, but from a business standpoint, it didn't necessarily change the way that you run sales or it doesn't change the way that you run marketing. I think that's actually the most important thing because if you're in the business, right. And you receive a note from an angry customer, you might immediately stop what you're doing, change a process, fire somebody, and then completely rework the entire way that your business operates and that's not necessarily, that's the, that's the point that I'm trying to, to, to focus on is, is don't let people uh, sway your, your decision just by one particular experience. And, and so for us, we have a decision-making process where we vet things first before actually executing. And then we, 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 it might take us three, four months to actually do it um, before we, before we actually make a move. But just because a customer says, Hey, I want feature X doesn't mean they're right. Um, they might be, but you have to be able to validate that. Great point, man. It really is. You know, a lot of times as entrepreneurs, especially myself, you know, you know, kind of call it shiny object syndrome, or or we might come up with an idea and we're like, you know, a lot of times I'm a practitioner of TM. And uh, I remember when I was taking the course, he says, look, you know, you're going to, you're going to meditate and you're going to have these great ideas. And then, you know, when you, when you come out of your meditation, don't act on them. <laughs> you can write them down. Maybe you could think about them a little bit, but it's really interesting too what, what you're saying um, about that. So, so here's the thing about that, about, you know, kind of flushing out the data and then, you know, implementing it based off of what the data is telling you. Uh, you could still be wrong though, right? I mean, yeah, the data sure. could, the data could be wrong. Yeah, it definitely can be. Um, but I think the, the decision might be a little bit slightly more informed than that of, of something a little bit more emotional. I mean, listen, we've been wrong multiple, we've actually been more wrong than we're, than we're right because of the data. Uh, but that one time that we're right, it, it actually worked even more so than, than all the times that we were wrong. Yeah, man, dude, I, I love that you said that because, you know, I think it kind of then transitions to, you know, you hear about success and failure and, um, and uh, you know, what Zig Ziglar calls temporary defeats. I like to call them that as well. So I've, you know, kind of, you know, commandeered that from him. Um, but you're right, you know, talk a little bit about that, about how, um, you know, those, those decisions that you make, most of the times they're actually, no matter what you do, they're not the right decision. Uh, they weren't necessarily the wrong decision either, but they're not the decision that really kind of drove the business uh, in the direction you wanted in that one decision that did. I'd love to hear, like, if you can think of it off the top of your head, maybe like one of those ones that you're, that you can remember, like, wow, you know, we customer X or, or all this data told us to do this. And then we had some other data that told us to do that. Mm-hmm. And we tried them both. And then maybe there was something in between that was like, oh, wow, like shit, we had no idea. Yeah. Um, and if you I can't think, think of anything, that's cool. I mean, you know, but, but no, I think, I think I can answer that. Yeah. Um, I think it has a lot to do with like what we're doing now, actually, like before, honestly, this week has been for me personally, you know, psychologically a little challenging because I'm thinking a lot about the customer experience. I'm thinking a lot about how to, how to set the proper expectations um so i would say the decisions that we're making now in the business which is what happens when the customer signs up right 
what happens when they email somebody? What, what, what does that look like? And so a lot of the times that, that we originally thought this is the, the, the structure, um, we're now realizing that based off of, again, based off of the da- data, that the expectations at the very beginning of the, of the service aren't actually, is actually doing more harm to the service than, than it is good, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. And it's, and, you know, I think also too, where you're getting at, we're talking about is, is business is, there's, there's always an evolution in business is always changes is always things that, you know, come your way. And and I started to think about, you know, what you were saying uh, and, you know, people always talk about, you know, uh, the, re- the release of a product. They say, well, you know, let's get, get the MVP, right? You know, minimum viable product. Let's get that out there because you might not necessarily know how people are going to use things. You can think about it all you want. You can do copy tests and you can have people, you can have your friends try things out. But then, you know, the, the, the real customer experience might take you in a direction that you just didn't even think of, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you have to stay true. I, I think something else that, that I should add into that is like knowing, again, like this, this phrase is kind of cheesy, but just like understanding your North Star a little bit, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, because if, if you if you really understand, if you really think that this is the way that the company needs to be moving forward, then you need to be able to make sure that that's that that's very uh, on your board or whatever it may be, like stapled into your forehead in some capacity. Um, and, and you need to make sure that that's the end goal, because as you start to move things, um, you at times lose track of, of, of your, of your, your, your why. Uh, and, and I think, uh, having constant reminders of that, um, I think it's incredibly important. I mean, we have documents that I'm like looking at right now, um, where it's like, you know, decision-making process, right personal development, um, how my team feels about me, um, what my team wants me to do, our philosophies. Um, you know, another one is like a memory bank, which is like all the things that we did in the past that didn't work as like a subtle reminder that I can just like look onto and say, when I'm thinking about something, um, you know, I'll, I'll read it off very briefly, but when I'm, when I'm thinking about something, um, what is the cost of, of this process? What will the results be? Uh, does it violate any of our of our philosophies? Um, then I go back down to the philosophies, and you know, is this being resourceful? And is this decision that I'm making is it being is it resourceful? Did I do it myself? I mean, these are all things I'm literally reading off of uh, a sheet that I have like on my desktop at all times. That um, anytime I just get an idea, I have to kind of look back and scale back a little bit and say, you know, is this actually is this actually worth it? Sometimes it's not, and I just kind of like even though I'm pissed off at myself because I'm like, I know this goddamn idea can work. Like I know that it can, that, that, it, that, that this is the actual like result, but you know, am I, am I actually right? I, I don't know. So I have to kind of just test it and bet it before I actually go through with it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great to, you know, to be in your position as a co-founder, uh, someone who, who is, you know, kind of helping to, um, uh, guide the company in the direction that, that you and, and your other, your co-founder and your other um, employees and executives want the company to go. And I think it's important to have that, the ability to, to reflect like that, right? A lot of people just aren't self-aware. Um, and, yeah. and, and it's interesting too, what you're talking about is, you know, writing it down and, and looking at it and reminding yourself, because a lot of times we forget, you know, we might go a couple days and, and just, you know, we write our goals down and then we stop, you know? So, you know, in a second, I want to talk to you about growth um, because, you know, a lot of companies struggle with that. And I know that you've grown um, uh, to, to tremendous levels. Uh, I don't actually know how quickly you've done it, but I'd like to, I'd like to, you know, for you to kind of maybe tell us a little bit about your growth, you know, how you did it. um, And, uh, and maybe some of the, some of the challenges that you went through uh, in a second, folks, we've been on with Jonathan Grzbowski. He is one of the co-founders of Penji.co, P-E-N-J-I.co. They're an on-demand graphic design company. Their, their business model is somewhat unique. They have a couple different packages for you. Um, it's one of these companies that, you know, like you heard him talk about this earlier, their core value 
values are really um, uh, starting with helping people. And that's what I, that's what I love about having him on. You can just listen to him speak. Um, he's uh, very cerebral in his thoughts and he's, you know, he's constantly trying to figure out, you know, what, what makes it better. If you'd like some more information about Jonathan or the company itself, you know, again, we have a lot of businesses um, that, that, that listen to this podcast, a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs. So go to penji.co, uh, check them out and uh, take a look at what they're doing. I do like the fact that you don't necessarily have to commit. You can just try it for a month and, you know, if it, it's not for you. It's not for you. Um, but they're doing things and take a look at some of the, their clients. They're, you know, fortune 500 companies, um, and, uh, they're doing stuff all over the world. So if you'd like some more information, again, you can go to penji, P E N J I dot co. I want to tell you about a company and a service that I believe can take your company to the next level. And that company is Penji, P-E-N-J-I. Penji is an unlimited design service that connects you with the top 2% of graphic designers in the world. You can get creative output like as if you had an internal team, but without that additional overhead cost. Look, if you want things like logos to flyers to digital art, even UX and UI, Penji is the company for you. I know because I've used them. Look, if you're the person within your company that's doing all the graphic design work, or maybe you even have a team and you're overwhelmed and you want to outsource it to a company that you know you can trust. Look, we know all these other services out there. Penji is like no other graphic design service that I've ever seen and I've used them and I highly recommend going to Penji. Co. Because you're a listener and a subscriber of The Alden Report, you can actually get 15% off of your first month with Penji. It's really, really simple. Go to Penji.co, enter in the code ALDEN15, and you'll get 15% off of your first month. Listen, if you want things like logos, custom illustrations, even a website, and you want it all under one plan, one plan that's not going to lock you in forever, then visit Penji.co and when you sign up, make sure you enter the code ALDEN15. Once you submit your order, it's really, really simple. Here's the thing. They get your custom designs back to you within 48 hours or less. So go on and visit Penji.co and enter in the code ALDEN15. That's P-E-N-J-I.co and enter in the code ALDEN15. So growth, man. Like you and I talked when we first talked, uh, uh, I don't know, about a month or so ago. Um, I remember you telling me like how, how many, you know, people that you have and how many graphic designers that you have, um, that, that work for you and, and do a lot of the work for you. Tell us a little bit about, you know, you had mentioned the first hundred customers, uh, earlier, or the first 150 customers. What was the tipping point or was there, was there a, was there a, um, thought amongst yourself and your co-founder like, Hey, we need to get to 200, 300, 400, 500. Tell us a little bit about that. I think from the beginning, we set the, 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 the indicator of like a very high outlandish goal um, being that we wanted to continue working our tails off and uh, until uh, people started to think of Penji first when it comes to graphic design versus that of like a competitor or even just like another popular you know, uh, uh, graphic design website that I'm not going to state aloud, um, but I'm sure you have one in your head, right? Like when I say that graphic design service, I need a logo. You have something in your, your brain and it's probably not Penji. And so that was always the goal was, you know, to have Penji be top of mind before all the others. Um, so when we did uh, the first uh, 100 customers, it was just a lot of grassroots. The uh, other aspect uh, after that, um, I'd say uh, it had a lot to do with um, talking to the customer and asking them, how can we make the service better? Um, so then from that aspect, we gained their, their the trust. We started to communicate with our, our customers. We asked them for referrals. Um, from referrals, we then migrated over to advertising. From advertising, we're kind of in the realm where we currently are now, uh, which is kind of the branding aspect. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it was a very clear cut process. It was locality in the very beginning and just phone calls and talking to people within our 30 mile geographic radius, talking to the customer to see if they have any friends and referrals that started to branch us off into different parts of the, of the United States. 
advertising, which then made us a little bit more global. Um, I think we're in over about like 40, 50 different countries now. Um, and then uh, where we are today, which is the branding piece, and that's just the recognition. Um, you know, are we able to do what we originally stated, which is get Penji front of mind as soon as you think about graphic design? Talk a little bit about, um, you know, capital, you know, so a lot of businesses, I mean, I've bootstrapped pretty much every business that I've had. Um, I, I, I do end up and I've ended up, you know, essentially financing things and, and, and borrowing money. Um, but, uh, you know, you're, so you're not a graphic designer. Uh, you're not a programmer either. I don't think, right? No, I'm just a dumb you just a dumb guy that started a really cool company and was doing really cool things. So um, whatever that's worth. Uh, yeah, so, exactly. so talk about, you know, um, the early stages and then at the point where, you know, like for instance, you know, I mean, your website's awesome. Again, you go to, you know, and it should be right. P N J I.co. Um, there's this, it's not a, um, you know, a cookie cutter type website. There's development involved. There's this integration involved with, with all the different graphic designers all over the world. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, what it took from a capital standpoint and were there points in, in, in the early days where you're like, you know, you needed capital and, and what did you do about it? Uh, I didn't get paid for six years of my entrepreneurship career. Um, and when I say paid, I mean like zero money. Um, I placed myself into pretty bad financial debt uh, cause I was just like credit card. I had really good credit. So it's like credit card, credit card, credit card. Um, and I, I did it. I, I used that all for my own expenses. So like, you know, like eating and things like that, I would just buy a ton of gift cards and I would just be like, well, if, if all my stuff goes awry, like I'm at my limit, I can, I can, I can do that. So, so I, I put myself in pretty bad, pretty bad debt. Um, but isn't that the it. way, it, but, but I mean, it's interesting you said that because I, I, I've done the same thing when I started this business, Blue Vase, I literally cashed out the 401k, maxed out credit cards, you know, yeah. uh, you know, I was bouncing my mortgage, um, you know, shit like that, that just, it just, that's just, that's just the life of an entrepreneur. you like, you have to be willing to do that stuff. Right. And it sucks. Doesn't, I mean, it's horrible. Yeah, I don't recommend doing that at all. Um, but 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 you know what though? Like, I don't. I mean, a very few entrepreneurs that I've met don't do shit like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you yeah, know? yeah. I mean, maybe I'll be honest. I don't. I don't really. I don't really talk to. I haven't talked to anybody. I mean, you, you do more interviews than I do, but I haven't talked to many people that that have done that that are willing to make that sacrifice. So it's interesting to hear that you you had you've had the opposite experience because I. I, I, I try to relate to people sometimes and I'm just like, yeah, have, imagine not getting paid for, you know, five, six years of your life. And they're like, what? Like, are you kidding me? And like, so when you say five, so, all right. So where, uh, let's talk about some of this stuff. So where were you living? Were you still living with your parents? Like, where, like, how are you, you know, like, did you tell me about that stuff? Because the reason why I'm asking again is because, you know, to this day, I mean, I, people are talking about it a little bit more now on social media, but, I, but on social media, you know, people are just, they're, they're so, um, uh, fascinated with the result, the jets, yeah, the course. cars, the watches, the girls, all this other stuff. And we know now looking back that, that most of that stuff is, is, is smoke and mirrors, but even for those that, that it's not smoke and mirrors, they, they still, to this day, they don't talk about the times when you had to use, you know, your Applebee's gift card to, 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 to buy dinner or whatever, you know, like, I, I just like to know kind of like really what that's like and what you were doing. I mean, if you didn't pay yourself for six years, Okay. So did you have a car? Like, did you, you know, like, let's talk, like talk about yeah. that stuff. You know? Um, yeah, that's totally fine. So, uh, I agree with you. Uh, I think the Instagram TikTok crap is annoying and, uh, I absolutely hate it because I know that the people that are taking those pictures of the jets, they're faking it. You know, there, there's no effing way. I know how hard I work. I'm sure you work hard as well. There's no way that these people are doing it. There's something else going on that we just don't know about, but that's another conversation for another day. I'm sure 1% of those are probably actually successful, but I know true, true success. I, I, I would say it's just there it's monetary for them and it's not, it's not wealth. My companies um, have generated hundreds of millions of dollars and I've been on a private jet twice. Yeah. I mean, I fly, I fly, I've flown first class a bunch of times, but that's a different experience. But anyway, so yeah, keep going. But yeah, I mean that, and I don't, I've never done that and I don't, I'm not that guy, you know, like, and it's, it's cool to experience, I'm sure. But like at the end of the day, I'm wearing a stupid t-shirt from my favorite uh, like restaurant 
and I'm wearing jeans. Like, and I haven't, I don't buy clothes for myself. I don't buy nice things. Um, I don't, uh, I currently, I currently rent. Um, but to, from the, in the very beginning, uh, I was 23 at the time, 22. Uh, so I could live at my ha- at home. Um, uh, when I was around 24, uh, ended up getting an apartment, um, with my co-founder and then we turned that our apartment into our office and we basically would live and uh and work in the same plot place it was extremely toxic <laughs> oh, i don't recommend it because you're just like you know you're constantly working you're constantly you know, on, you know, you open your door and you're like, all right, let's talk about business. You close your door, you wake up the next morning, let's go to business. And so it, it was, a, a Wait, was it really toxic? Door. Like, why was it toxic? I mean, it, it was great. Right. But it was toxic in the aspect that there's no, there's no way. I think that I'm, per, I've, I'm personally receiving the, the, the downfalls of that now. Um, because, um, because it's just like cascading, right? Like it, it was really, it's, it's exactly what was needed in the beginning. But as you, as you add more stress into your life, I think it's just like, man, like I feel, I feel like I'm getting, and maybe it's just age too. I'm, and I'm only 32. So it's not like I'm old, but I just feel like I'm getting exhausted a little bit faster than, than what I once was. And it could be fatigue as a business overall. I, I'm still compartmentalizing and trying to figure it out myself. But in the very beginning, it was just nonstop 24 hours a day. Uh, probably getting three, four hours of sleep for probably six, six, seven years ish of the foundation of, of, of where Penji was. Um, in addition to that, um, I was lucky enough to date quite often. <laughs> um, so that was, uh, you know, kind of moving around places, um, um, money wise, food wise, I, I remember specifically going to, uh, Starbucks on 18th, uh, and, and Locust and uh, 18th street and Locust right in Rittenhouse in Philadelphia for people who own a you know, geography want to actually know, but I remember making myself three peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, um, and, and going to work at a Starbucks and then working there until like six o'clock, seven o'clock and coming back home and, and probably having like more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because I'm, I'm a six, one guy. I'm currently like 195, pretty, pretty lean in terms of like, you know, physical fitness. And, um, and, and so like, I need to eat a lot. Like I eat all F and day, like that's all I do. And so like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches were like my, were my jam. Cause I knew that I had enough protein in it to kind of get me to, you know, keep moving. Um, what are some other hacks? Uh, I documented everything inside of an Excel spreadsheet in terms of like what I bought food wise. I usually, I was able to uh, find tricks within like a department, you know, like uh, 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 grocery stores where I can reduce my, my uh, weekly uh, costs for food to anywhere between like 10 to $20 uh, a, a, a week. Um, and sometimes it could even go way even further than that. It might be even two weeks based off of what I was eating. Um, I switched to a vegetarian diet because, uh, I'm not vegetarian anymore, but I switched to a vegetarian diet because I knew that beans were cheaper than, than chicken. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of things that like I did in the very beginning. I, I remember specifically like one final, one final thing. I had no money in my bank account. Um, my mom, recently passed about um, uh, about a year ago, very close to this day. And, uh, and I had no freaking, she was sick. She had breast cancer and I had no, I, I had uh, no money at, at the time um, in my bank account, but I had like a $250 gift card to uh, I think it was like American express or something, you know, bull crap like that. And, uh, and she was, you know, relatively sickly at that specific time. And I wanted to give her the confidence knowing that like, I'm doing the right thing. My brother graduated. I remember giving like, uh, I, I paid the meal and that was kind of like a moment where it was like, Whoa, you know, my son's actually doing some, some cool stuff. And, uh, and I remember giving that $250 gift card, uh, slyly to the person. Cause I didn't want her to see that it was a gift card. Uh, and then she, I, I remember her just like looking like, all right, I think he, I think he's good. And then fast forward, you know, kind of 
full circle with this uh, this quick story, and I'll I'll kind of end there. But um, right before she passed, I have a really cool apartment, um, like a you know a cool apartment. And uh, and I remember like right before she was like barely able to walk. She was able to walk that day she walked into the to the uh to the apartment she was like wow you know this is this is awesome you know like it's it's such a cool place uh it looks really nice it was well furnished everything etc cetera, etc cetera. and so that was kind of cool to you know be able to do something nice for her when there was nothing but I was able to slyly move my way around and then to the point of like you know I wouldn't say successful I'm, I'm successful by any stretch of the imagination but um I think a little bit more successful than, than what I, I was previously. And so that was, that was a cool, two cool moments for me that I, I don't really share often on any podcast, but it, it popped in my head today. And so you got it. <laughs> well, man, it's a beautiful story, man. And sorry about your mom and in, in, in it's uh but, but, uh, but I, I it, it, the, the beautiful part of it was, is that you gave, like you said, you gave her the confidence that like, okay, my son's, you know, he, he's, he's, he's going to be okay. And, 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 you know, she, she knew that, you know, that she probably didn't have much time left on the planet. So I, thank you for sharing that story with us, man, because I, I, it, it's painful. I could, I could see it in your, in your eyes and hear it in your voice. Um, even though I have my $10, um, like really kind of wacky glasses on, um, I can still see you, even though you can't see me. Um, but no, I appreciate that story, man. And, and I, and it's, um, it's something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs need to hear. Uh, because I remember a lot of that stuff too. Unfortunately, my mom's still around um, and my dad. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I know what it's like to not have any money in the bank account. Right. And I know what it's like to, to struggle constantly, right. Constantly struggling over and over and over again. And go back to earlier what you had said before about, am I doing the right thing? You know, is this what I should be doing? You know? Um, and uh, no, it was, it was, it was a great story. And thanks for sharing that. We're on with Jonathan, Jonathan Grzbowski, uh, one of the co-founders of Penji. You can visit the, the website at pnji.co. They're an on-demand graphic design company. Um, you've, you know, you've listened to him uh, talk a little bit about kind of the, the beginnings of the company and the things that he's gone through and, you know, continuing to go through um, as an entrepreneur uh, and a co-founder. And if, you know, if you're listening right now or you're watching right now and you're in need um, you know, for graphic design. And uh, it's time to start having Penji to be in the front of mind uh, for you and not some of these other companies um, that you may, ha may have heard of. And so check them out again, penji.co. Um, and they're doing cool stuff as far as like the pricing structure. I saw their pricing structure. They basically have kind of like three levels. There's no commitment uh, as far as a, you know, it's a, you know, it's a month to month type thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, they have uh, clients all over the world and they also have some big, big clients uh, as well. So if you want some more information um, and you need these types of services from from your website to just traditional graphic design of your logo or whatever it is check them out pnji.co um so so um you know uh present day right now right you know uh we're talking you know you 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 get your company to a decent level um is it still do you feel like you're still struggling are you still is it is it you know a, a constant like you know trying to make things work um and and when, and if the answer is yes i don't know if it is or not but if the answer is yes is do you say to yourself um cuz i go through this right like you know when is it going to be when am i going to get to the point where I don't have to worry about this shit anymore. Like, do you ever, mm. do, you, do you think about that? Cause I think about it every day. I do. I, um, I think it's a different kind of stress than it was. Right. I think, I think previously it was the type of stress of like, how do I survive? And then because that, that was always a mode that I would just gravitate towards of just that survival. And I think now it's a different kind of stress of like, it's easier to take it away. Um, and so that's just a different type of stress. So I do think about that. Uh, I do think about it often because I don't want to lose it, but I think it kind of goes back to like the foundation where, whereas like, right, let's look at trends, right? So you have a cancel a churn rate. So we have a churn rate, which basically to people who may not know is just the amount of people that cancel, uh, per, the percentage of people that cancel. So is the company going to go to shit tomorrow probably not right mathematically speaking probably not could it go to crap if it if this trend happens for an entire year right yes 
Um, that's how our business runs. Most people listening, they may not have that, right? We're a subscription-based service. So we can kind of pinpoint things on accuracy uh, a little bit better than other people. Um, if you're a consultant and, and you're thinking about this you know, now, and, and you, said, you say to yourself, well, if I send 100 emails, I can get one appointment. Well, then you should try and find ways to, to, to get that number so you, you don't have to think about that. Because and every business is different, right? And every formula is going to be different. For us, it's, it's a lot different. But I would say, okay, well, what do I need to not think about that? Okay, I need five sales a month, right? Well, how did I traditionally get five sales a month? Okay, cool. So I usually get five sales a month by doing a cold email. Well, how many emails do I have to sell, uh, send? How many? How much money of advertising do I have to spend in order to get those five, uh, those those hundred leads that then convert into five sales? How many books do I have to sell in order to get one consulting gig? Right? Like, there's 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 so many formulas that you have to do and, and to break it down. And, and so I would probably look at it from like that perspective of if you don't want to look at that anymore, if you don't want to think about it anymore, you have to be able to figure out like what how are what are the channels that people are actually coming from in order to become a customer, and then just basically doing that as 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 best as you possibly can. And that's probably one of the biggest successes of why Penji's is is the way that it is today, is because we figured out well. If we do this a hundred times, we're going to get the result of why. And, and we basically times that and multiplied it by a million. Love it. I love it, man. I was just thinking, you know, I've had Grant Cardone on and I've been on his show. When you think about, when you hear about the 10 X, um, you know, if you if you want to make a million, you might as well go for 10 million because, you know, if you, if you get halfway there to the 10, you're so much better than, than the one. So yeah, that's true. Um, wow, man. So dude, this is, this has been awesome. Uh, I'm super blessed to have you here. I'm glad, I'm glad we connected again. We've been on with Jonathan Grisbowski, uh, the co-founder and chief marketing officer of Penji. Uh, if you would like some more information about Penji, you can go to Penji.co, P-E-N-J-I.co. And if you've listened to this interview, if you're watching this interview, um, you know, th- we, we'd love to bring you know, to you people who are doing real things, who have done real things and continue to do real things. You've listened to his stories and his struggles. And he talked about his personal life and the things that he's gone through, because this is real life. This is what it's like to be an entrepreneur. This is what it's like to grow a business. But at the same time, he's building a beautiful business that's also helping people as well. And I'm blessed to have had him here. And lastly, you know, I usually don't end with this, but I'm going to do it right now. Listen, if you've enjoyed this episode of The Alden Report, if you felt as though that it's add value, added value to your life, if it's resonated with you, I'd ask you to like it, subscribe it, and also share it with everyone that you know. If you're not in need of these services, it doesn't really matter. If if you just listened to what he had to say and the things that he's gone through, I think we can all kind of relate to what um, the, what Jonathan has gone through and what he continues to go through. And his honesty and candor uh, has just been remarkable. So um, I really want to thank you, Jonathan, for being here. My name is Mike Alden. That's Jonathan Grzbowski. And we'll talk to you soon. I want to tell you about a company and a service that I believe can take your company to the next level. And that company is Penji, P-E-N-J-I. Penji is an unlimited design service that connects you with the top 2% of graphic designers in the world. You can get creative output like as if you had an internal team, but without that additional overhead cost. Look, if you want things like logos, to flyers, to digital art, even UX and UI, Penji is the company for you. I know because I've used them. Look, if you're the person within your company that's doing all the graphic design work, or maybe you even have a team and you're overwhelmed and you want to outsource it to a company that you know you can trust. Look, we know all these other services out there. Penji is like no other graphic design service that I've ever seen and I've used them. And I highly recommend going to Penji. Co. Because you're a listener and a subscriber of the Alden Report, you can actually get 15% off of your first month with Penji. It's really, really simple. Go to Penji.co, enter in the code Alden15, and you'll get 15% off of your first month. Listen, if you want things like logos, custom illustrations, even a website, and you want it all under one plan, one plan that's not going to lock you in forever then visit Penji.co and when you sign up, make sure you enter the code ALDEN15.
15. Once you submit your order, it's really, really simple. Here's the thing. They get your custom designs back to you within 48 hours or less. So go on and visit penji.co and enter in the code Alden15. That's P-E-N-J-I.co and enter in the code Alden15.